Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a great end to your week and a great start to your weekend. In this class everybody we are looking at IELTS listening. Specifically we will look at a part one and part two uh, listening question and audio from our fourth exam book and it's going to be a discussion between a student and her professor and a tour of a university. Uh, again, um, these materials, these lessons, they're coming from our websites at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. The listening section is the same for both the academic or the general, so you will see the same listening uh, passage or same listening exercises and exams on the academic website. This is aehelp.com, the academic, as on the general. Uh, click this big red button. Pow. Um, that's just above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We're an IDP affiliate. We're a British uh, Council partner. We're an IELTS Test Registration Center. I'm a British Council agent. We help thousands of students every month uh, succeed on their IELTS exams. You can see their uh, success stories and we've got their videos and we're very proud and happy about those students. For the general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. It's the green background. Again, same listening and reading here. Uh, you can click that join now button and use the code uh, 14 days which is coming from a recent video uh, to get uh, an extra 10% discount again it's a one-time payment you don't pay every month we don't believe in that because you don't know how long you need the materials for um, and uh, and then you can follow with these classes you can maximize your learning uh, we're going to be doing this exam test four for those of you who have our materials today uh, welcome Fuang hi Elizabeth Anahita nice to have our members here welcome Carolina our chat moderator she is here to help make this class go smoothly and answer questions so Carolina can help you out if you have questions about how to purchase the product, Carolina can help. Um, one other way to purchase the products is with Shopify through directly through YouTube. You just have to send us an email to activate your account. Hi, Domenico. I hope you're uh, excited about the exam. I hope it's going well for you in Ireland there. And uh, welcome Farida uh, again, Michael, Noreen, Manji, Manzi. Uh, nice to have. Uh, many of our subscribers here as well. Anna, good to have our premium members with us. Absolutely. Uh, students, again, the code on the website is 14 days, 10% discount. Um, the apps are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. The apps will uh, be very uh, useful for you to uh, study on the go. You can link them to the websites. Uh, for more about the listening section and about the structure of IELTS, check out that blog that we just created. It's a guide to IELTS. It's on the websites. It's free. Uh, for vocabulary schedules, uh, check out Instagram for us, uh, IELTS underscore A help, G IELTS help. And uh, for questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Uh, tomorrow, somebody is asking, when do we when do we do speaking next? Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we have speaking part two for members, and then speaking part three where everybody will join the chat. Again, we use the websites to speak with students as well. Okay. All right. Uh, Ali Beck says, how can I get useful C2 vocabulary? Again, on the websites. So Ali Beck, you can uh, go to the website, go to your My Student account, which I'm going to be using in a moment for the listening anyway. Um, up at the top, you have blogs, okay? And we've got a ton of great content there for you as well, like vocabulary. So you can... Uh, Look for vocabulary and then for C1, C2 vocabulary, definitely check out uh, this blog here that gives you a list of the 570 most used words in academic and professional English. Um, there you go in the chat. It's there for you. OK. 
Cam. So check it out. All right, um, we're going to be using the My Student account here uh, in just a moment for the uh, listening audio, which is here. And uh, coming up in October, we're going to have live classes on the website also. So another great reason to join and become a premium member. All right, uh, students, um, let's get into it. So some listening section strategies. Uh, the first strategy in the listening section that's very important and you need th to know this before uh, we listen is when you hear the instructions and it's in the paper based and the computer based so when you're listening to the instructions the instructions are more than a minute look at the topic of each of the four parts so this is the first tip you can call this one a trick if you want so during the that's about 90 seconds 90 uh, second introduction look at the topic of each of the uh, four listening parts okay it's very important so you get an idea of what you will be listening to okay uh, Tanzil yes you can get a band nine in six months if you study really really hard okay and you study correctly all right and you have a good starting level of English Okay. Band 9 is possible. You just have to focus a lot on communication. Okay, uh, so again, students, for the listening, we're going to aehelp.com. Uh, we're going to listen and uh, answer questions while we listen. I'm going to give you strategies uh, as we uh, complete the listening answers. While we listen, just focus on listening, visualizing. So imagine picture the information visualize it see it in your head and then answer the questions um, as you listen don't put them in the chat don't put answers in the chat we will go through the answers together after put them on a separate piece of paper separate document uh, write them on the wall in the kitchen um, yeah no don't do that <laughs> your parents why, why why are there weird English words on the wall um, no so write them in a separate document separate piece of paper and then we will share them after, okay? But not in the chat. All right, so again, uh, this is uh, our fourth exam, uh, listening part one and two. So we go to the audio CDs on the website. Uh, we're going to go to CD four, uh, track one. Ready and listen. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings, and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions, and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have ten minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between a student and a university administrator. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Oh, hi there. Is this the University Registrar's Office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the University's Assistant Registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. The student says she has concerns about registration. So B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. 
Oh, hi there. Is this the University Registrar's Office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the University's Assistant Registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. Certainly. What can I help you with? Sorry, what was your name again, Ms? Anderson. Melanie Anderson. And, well, my first question concerns my student record. I'm beginning my second year of uni, but my first didn't go so well. You're worried about your marks then, Ms. Anderson, and how they impact your registration status. Exactly. I don't know my precise average, but it is not good. Could you look into this for me? Absolutely. Could you please spell your last name for me? I've seen it spelt with either an E or an O in the final syllable. It's an E. A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. My family ancestry is Swedish. Right then. And the next piece of information I need is your student registration number. Okay, um, oh, it seems I've left my student identification with my registration number on it in the car. Can I give you some other piece of information or identification? Yes, you can. Along with your surname, I can find your account with your date of birth. Great. It's the 20th of August, 1997. The 20th of August, 1997? Yes, that's right. All right. Let's see your account then. Okay, here it is. Well, I see what you mean about your marks. These are certainly not ideal. However, your average is above the level necessary to proceed to year two of your programme. However, I do see there's a hold on your account which is preventing you from registering for classes. Yes. See, I thought that was because of my marks. No, it's not. It's actually because you have unpaid library fines. Library fines? Yes. During the past year, you must have been tardy in returning some items to the university library. Yes, I think I was. Hmm, hardly seems like a good reason to prevent a student from registering, though. I know how you feel, but books are expensive for the university library to acquire, and we must coerce students to pay fines one way or another. How much do I owe? Six pounds twenty. Six pounds twenty? Well, I suppose it's a relief the total is so small. You now have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. Well, now that that is out of the way, I did have another concern. I need advice on what modules to take in my first semester. I'm in the BA Art History program, but as you can see from my record, I failed a class which is a prerequisite for two modules I'm supposed to take this semester. Yes, it looks like that's right. It was Art History 1270 that you failed. Is that right? One, two, seven, zero. Yes, I took it with Professor Calder. I found his teaching style did not match my learning style. Right. Well, that art history class is indeed a prerequisite for both art history 2170 and 2260. Yes, unfortunately, that's what I found out earlier. Is there anything that can be done? Well, Miss Anderson, I think there is. Here's what we'll do. We'll register you in the module you failed last year, and then we'll put you in Art History 2240, which counts towards your degree in place of 2260. 2240 has no prerequisite, however. But what about the 2170 class? Yes, well, that's where we'll have to be creative. Are you comfortable taking an extra class in the spring semester? Yes, I think so. Good. We will register you in 1270 and 2240 in the fall, and then register you in 2170 in the spring. Great. And one final question. Is Professor Calder teaching Art History 1270 again this autumn? Yes, he is. But I've put you in Professor Hennessy's section instead. I think you'll be more successful. That is the end of Section 1. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, students, always use that half a minute to check your answers. Don't jump to the next part. Okay, that's a common mistake. Uh, let me just stop the audio here for us on the website. 
and then we'll go through the answers. Um, so, uh, yeah, sorry, my bad. I said uh, the student meets with a professor, but it's not a professor. It's the university registrar, so an administrator. Hopefully everybody recognized that. Uh, by the way, at the beginning there, I uh, looked at um, all of the topics. So part one, obviously, it's a student and uh, registrar, registrar administrator. Okay. Um, part two, uh, part three, and part four. Um, what is uh, part two about? Anybody? So um, this is what I said. The first tip or the first strategy is look at the topics of part two and three and four in that preparation time. That can really kind of help your brain to adjust and uh, get in the right direction. Uh, Maya says it's about marks, not a question to Maya. Uh, what is part two about? So we have four parts to the listening section. Each has 10 questions. Each one gets more and more difficult. This is one of the big reasons you need to look ahead so you can think about it. Um, part two is, uh, that's right, Fuang, it's a tour. And to be more specific, it's a resort tour. Okay, it's touring a resort. Um, so going around a resort. Uh, what is part uh, three about? Okay, so what is part three about? Part one is the student talking about her registration with the registrar admin. Part two is the resort tour. I showed you these at the very beginning. David says it's some kind of a discussion in uh, part three. Okay, what's the discussion? Again, it's good to get your head kind of going. Uh, Ming says it's a map. I don't know if there was a map in uh, part uh, uh, three. Okay. So it was the ethics of, <clears throat> sorry, ethics of zoos. So something about zoos, zoos, okay? And part four, this is what I mean, everybody. You got to pay attention. A lot of students are very nervous and their mind is kind of drifting. Domenico, when you're doing the uh, listening section of your exam, make sure this doesn't happen, okay? I know you're doing it any moment now. Uh, so uh, pay attention, use strategy. As soon as the listening starts, think, okay, I have to check the topic of the other three sections, okay? Hathu, uh, that's right, it's the loggerhead turtle. Okay, so student registering, resort tour, zoos, loggerhead turtle. That's what you will be reading about. Okay, uh, let's look at the questions. So uh, keep in mind, students, there's no example anymore uh, since 2020 in the IELTS exams. So we just go to question one. They give you the answer two, three times uh, for a lot of these. So in part one, here's a tip. Don't worry. Be patient. They often go back and answer the same question multiple times. So in which year of the university is the student enrolled? Anna says B. They are in their second year or they're going into their second year. Absolutely, Anna. Carolina, you love that turtle emoji. Don't we all, though? So cute. Um, yeah, um, they say I'm in my second year. I'm in year two of my studies. They say it, I think, two or three times. So hopefully you caught that. <clears throat> they are, the student is in their second year. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, and what is the student mostly concerned about? Okay. Concerned about the most. Always really pay attention to uh, these um, very important words like most, which is a superlative, right? It's They're not just kind of worried about it. They're most worried about it. Jen Kruti say A. Jaheda says B. Farm says B. Anna says B. B is correct. She's worried about most about her registration status. Her marks are not great. It's true. They are not great, but she is worried because she cannot 
register for classes. Okay, that's what's making her panic. Is I can't register for classes. Now we get that later on too, right? So why can she not register? She thinks it's her marks, but it's not actually her marks. Uh, what is it? Right? So um, go into discussion about the listening section when you have the chance, right? So um, here, discuss answers with your peers, okay? to effectively learn listening with partners discuss answers right like why is the answer B and not A okay why is she more concerned about her um, registration than her marks okay and then maybe your friend or your classmate will say oh it's because she can't register her classes and th she thinks it's her marks But actually, it is because of why? <laughs> why can this? Uh, why can Melanie uh, not register? What's the issue? Okay, so she thinks it's her marks. So she's worried about her marks because she thinks it's her marks, but it's not her marks. Maya says it's money. Um, kind of Maya. Jen says it's library fees. Yeah, it's library fees. Yeah. Absolutely. They always figure out a way to get you um, here. If you don't pay your parking fees, then you can't renew your driver's license. So they always figure out a way to make you pay that fee if you have to pay it here they're not letting her register by the way students um, for those of you planning to study in Australia Canada UK USA this is the way it works if you don't pay your library fees or your fees or money that you owe during university they will not let you register for your classes that's what they do so IELTS is kind of real in this way um, you know like sometimes I think students or people think that IELTS is making up information like oh did they just make that up no this has been like this for a hundred years uh, when I was in university it was the same if I had library fines or any kind of a fine a parking fine at the university you are not allowed to register until you pay those fines okay so uh, I don't know about other countries but I do know that in the US Canada UK Australia that's the way it is okay is it the same is it the same in Argentina or Saudi Arabia or India do they block your registration when you don't pay your fine Maybe. Vietnam. Okay, so it's her registration status. She's worried about not being able to register. Okay, makes sense. Okay, <laughs> Carolina says nope. All right. <laughs> yeah, they keep you on your toes here, that's for sure. Um, all right, then uh, comes this form. So she doesn't have her, uh, part it says in Iran, yes. Um, good, it works. Um, so then they get you to fill out this form okay now be patient in part one they will often spell names not always but often usually they'll spell the names and they'll spell it twice what is her name Alex says it's Anderson with an E okay I didn't write that down definitely an A it's not an EA it's an A and I believe she says it's an E instead of an O because I'm Swedish if I remember correctly okay uh, Domenico yes it will be listening uh, then reading then writing Fong says it's an O um, is it an O 
I'm not sure. So this is where I would probably go back and listen again. Um, let's see. I think it's right at the beginning. Uh, it's probably about a, around 1 minute 30 seconds. So just jump back to the website. Is it an O or an E? She says it very clearly. Let's listen. You will see that there is an example. Thank you for seeing me today. Ms. So B has been indicated for you. Listen carefully. What can I help you with? Sorry, what was your name again, Ms? Anderson. Melanie Anderson. And well, my first question... Yes. Exactly. I don't know my precise average. It's an E. A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. Mm. I've seen it spelt with either an E or an O in the final syllable. It's an E. A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. -E my family answered second year of uni, but my first didn't go so well. You're worried about your marks? Second year of uni. Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. Could you please spell your last name for me? I've seen it spelt with either an E or an O in the final syllable. It's an E. A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. -E okay. That's what you do when you get your answers wrong. And then you know, uh-oh, I have to listen a little bit more carefully because that was obviously very clearly given. Anderson with an E, not an O. And if you wrote an O, you're going to definitely get that one wrong, right? Everybody's like, yeah, okay, Adrian, we got it. You played it like four times there. Um, it's an E, okay? All right. Okay, um, good. So, uh, birthday. When is this person's uh, birthday? Okay. When was this person born? Jen and Anna say it's the 20th of August. Yeah. And you can keep it, uh, that really simple in the aisles. You can go Aug 20 like that. Okay. Use abbreviations for months because it's way faster and you're less likely to make spelling mistakes. So, um, Aug 20, 1997. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, library fines. So we realize she has to pay library fine, fines. How much does she have to pay? Okay. Aug 20, everyone. That's the easiest. Okay. Um, Maya, if you write 2008, uh, because it's the 20th, you'll probably get it right. But just be careful. If it's under the number 12, it could be tricky, right? It's better to write the word for the month. Okay. Uh, 620. That's right. This is, there we go. So 6 pounds 20. 6 dot 20. Very good. That's all you need. So this is the correct answer here. This is the correct answer here, and this is the correct answer here. Yeah, if you have a question about how you can write and what you should and should not write, like sometimes people say, oh, I, I wrote uh, 620 pounds. Uh, do I get that wrong? Yeah, you can. Um, okay, don't write pounds. Uh, you have to pay attention to what they give you. They gave you the symbol for pound. So technically, IELTS says don't write it again because realistically on paper, you never write uh, like this. You never write like that and then write pounds again. It's technically wrong, okay? And whatever is technically wrong, IELTS considers wrong, okay? So be very, very careful. So here they're just looking for the number. They're just looking for 620, okay? All right, be be careful. If they don't include the the uh, symbol or the word, then then write it. Okay, number six. Um, write no more than three words for each answer. What program is the student enrolled in? Um, again, keep it simple. The program is art history. Hopefully, everybody got that. Um, if you got BA, Art History, that's okay too. Bachelor of Art History, they will take that. Okay. Um, art History is enough because the program itself is Art History. Okay. All right. Now we had a matching answer. Um, here, you want to match it. 
Uh, and there were a lot of numbers. So here, really pay attention to this. 2170127022670. So which one did she fail? This one's really easy and it's logic. Remember, some of you were in the reading class that we just finished before this class. In the reading class, I said that about half of the answers you can use logic to answer. You don't actually have to read the passage. You should read the passage, but you don't have to. Uh, same thing with the listening. You can answer a lot of questions by logic. Um, the student is in her second year right now, or getting into second year, right? She just finished her first year. Everybody agree? We got that from the listening? Okay. Um, there is only one first year class here, and it's this one. How do I know that? Because the number is one, okay? In universities, and I think this is true for most universities around the world, um, first year classes start with one. Second year classes start with two. Third year classes start with three. Fourth year classes start with four. And master's classes or graduate classes start with five. Um, there are also bridge or gap classes where you can do like high school English, but in a university class, those start with a zero. So it'd be like zero to seven something. Okay. Now it might not be the same in every country, but in US, Canada, UK, it's that way. So in the UK, you have four numbers. The first number usually shows the year. Okay, uh, the university I went to, University of Victoria, where I graduated from with my psychology degree, uh, it was three numbers. So it was like two, one, seven. We didn't have the zeros at the end. So it was just three numbers, but it, the first number was always the year. Okay. Everybody got that? Yeah. So here, um, know that and then this will become easier you know the logic so you're like oh, okay one two seven is the only one that they have taken and failed because that's a first year class okay and then we know that number eight or sorry number seven so that was number eight uh, number seven two one seven zero is the one that she's going to take in the spring they talk about that in detail and then we know that two two six zero is the one that she is not taking so that one's C okay so the correct answers are uh, B A and C like that okay um, the uh, masters, the PhD, all graduate classes are fives. They start with a five. Okay, there's no separation there because in masters, PhD, it's just a mix. So, um, and sometimes it's sometimes they start do start with a four. Like some masters classes are considered fourth year classes as well. But anyway, don't get confused. Uh, five graduate classes start with a five. Okay, all right. Pay attention when you're registering to those numbers. It's important. Okay, um, number 10. The student is registered for 120 with the same professor as she previously had. True or false? A or B? Number 10 is... That's right, Maya. Very good. The answer is false. Correct answer is B. Okay, a lot of people got that wrong. Let's listen and see why you got that wrong. Uh, do you remember what I wrote here? I wrote down names. Okay, so I said names and um, I wrote down two names. He said, yes, it's the same professor teaching the class. It's Calder, but I put you into a different section. I put you with Hennessy. Okay, uh, you got to be able to pick up that information. So if you missed it, Go back, listen a second, third, fourth time. Okay, so back again to the website, aehelp.com. That's where you find all these practice exams materials. These are our websites. They power these live classes. Um, and then here we go. It counts towards your degree in place seven zero and two is, but I've put you in Professor Hessel. Good. 
we will register you in 1270 and 2240 in the fall, and then register you in 2170 in the spring. Great. And one final question. Is Professor Calder teaching Art History 1270 again this autumn? Yes, he is. But I've put you in Professor Hennessy's section instead. I think you'll be more so Great. And one final question. Is Professor Calder teaching Art History 1270 again this autumn? Yes, he is. But I've put you in Professor Hennessy's section instead. I think you'll be but more I've successful. But I've put you in Professor Hennessy's section That is section the end. Just do you in 2170 in the spring. Great. And one final question. Is Professor Calder teaching Art History 1270 again this autumn? Yes, he is. But I've put you in Professor Hennessy's section instead. I think you'll be more successful. Okay. So there's the answer. Now, um, a couple of important uh, tips based on that last... Uh, so here, the student is registered for 1270 with the same professor as she previously had. No, it's false. She is registered with Professor Calder. Okay, um, here's a very important tip, everybody. And I think it was Tatiana that we talked about this in the last class with the reading section. Okay, um, keep this in mind, everybody. One very common bad practice or mistake we can say among um, IELTS learners is they keep looking for new materials every time they study. This is bad. You, for effective study, you must identify mistakes. I'm gonna do this as a little list here for you. A identify mistakes, B, figure out the reason for the mistakes, go back and repeat the material to solidify the right strategies and content. Okay, so those students that just jump around new materials all day every day, their learning tends to be a lot slower and a lot more problematic than those students who are more systematic. They have a set of core materials that are good materials. They review their mistakes, they get feedback, they identify, they listen, they check the transcripts, they listen again, <clears throat> they figure out why they make those mistakes, and then they correct them, right? So that's the better way, okay? All right, uh, Mario is asking, can I do the IELTS online? Yes, uh, Mario, in some countries you can. If you go to our website and you see this button on the website, it means that you have an at-home option for the IELTS through IDP. If you don't see that, it's a good chance you don't have it yet in your country. Okay. <laughs> Alex says, what strategies can I use to improve my mental well-being and overall happiness? Alex, interestingly, my answer to that is start with exercise. Go for a run every morning or go for a swim every morning. That's step number one to feeling happy and healthy. Exercise is the first step to happiness. Helps your serotonin, helps your health, your overall well-being. And we can talk a lot more about what leads to happiness. But that's step number one. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. So uh, that was listening section one. Hopefully you got some good tips out of me uh, for that. Um, what were your marks? How did you do? So uh, that was section. Well, I called it section one. Now they call it part one. But how did you do? What, what did you get from uh, 10? So what was your score uh, from 10? Maya says seven. Okay, Maya, that's kind of like um, Okay. Elizabeth says seven. Yep, yeah. uh, girls and guys, ideally for part one, your goal for part one it should be nine or 10. Okay, if you're losing more than a point in part one, you really have to think what happened why did I lose two three marks it's not good because I don't have a lot of marks that I can lose to get those higher band scores right so Jen or Pam nine is nine is good okay eight it's like eh. Helen four don't sit the exam if you're getting less than six this is an important tip everybody if you're under six for part one okay 
Uh, so six or less, uh, do not sit the IELTS exam because I think you're wasting your money. I think that if you're getting less than six in part one, you're not ready for the IELTS exam yet. Definitely anything under five, okay? All right, <clears throat> so make sure, all right? Okay, um, students, let's do uh, the next part, part two, the tour of uh, the resort. We know it's a resort tour, right? Because we looked ahead. We know that the topic is a resort tour, so we're going to find out about the amenities, maybe a swimming pool, some restaurants, maybe a casino, who knows, right? But we are thinking resorts. There's gotta be a beach, it's gotta be beautiful, top shelf, five star, great food great dining okay mtj says i think for a mark seven you're only allowed 10 mistakes yeah about 10 mistakes yep yeah, you're right uh mohammed it's only about 10 mistakes and um if you're doing three mistakes or four mistakes in in part one that only leaves you like six mistakes for the rest of the listening that's much more challenging right okay um so let's do this so again everybody answer separately not in the chat to give everybody a chance um, let's do it together here we go now turn to section two take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. here we go 11. approximately how long will the tour be according to the guide uh, which are four features of the resort i'm going to take notes for this okay what time is the last call at the discotheque? Okay, so dancing a last drink. Sure, I'm listening for that. What is the configuration of section two. the buildings on the beach? Okay, you so we've got uh, beach bars, entrance, an uh, cafe. Resort I'll hotel. Listen for that. First, you have some time right, to look at then, questions 11 to 16. Okay, and then we've got 18, 19, 20, so I'll have now, some more time to, to, to look at those, so I don't need to and worry about it And answer questions 11 okay. to 16. So here we go with 11, the length of the tour. I'd like to welcome all of you to the White Sands Five Star Resort here in beautiful Varadero, Cuba. Today, I'm going to show you the fine features you'll get to experience during your stay here at White Sands. Before we begin, does anyone have any questions? Hi there, yes, I have a quick question. How long will the tour be? I have to meet the rest of my family for lunch in an hour. Not a problem, sir. The tour will take no more than 30 minutes. If after this time anyone wants more details on any of the resort's features, I can help them out individually. Any other questions? No? Well, let's get started then. White Sands covers 10 acres of land, including direct access to over 250 metres of pristine Caribbean coastline. It is perfectly safe to swim in the waters here at White Sands, but do be on the lookout for jellyfish in the water. They are not deadly, but their sting does pack a punch. As we pass through the lobby, I want you to take note of the main bar area on your left. The bar is open from 11 in the morning each day and closes at 1 o'clock a.m. each night. As we proceed down the main path, you'll see four apartment buildings marked A and B on your left and C and D on your right. Between buildings C and D on your right is one of our finest restaurants featuring traditional Cuban cuisine. We have seven restaurants in all at White Sands and we invite you to try your favourites while you are here. I have a question. Go ahead. In our brochure, I read that we are only entitled to five restaurant visits per week we stay at the resort. Is that right? Yes, that's right. The restaurants are only open for dinner and reservations are mandatory. You will be able to make reservations at the end of this tour or any time before five this evening. When you are not dining at our a la carte restaurants, you may eat at either of our two buffet restaurants, which are open for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Additionally, there is a night cafe, which is open until 4am. Does the resort have a nightclub for dancing? Yes, of course. We have a discotheque located at the end of the main resort path, further away from the apartments. This is, of course, for noise reasons. In fact, the discotheque is conveniently located next to the night cafe. And what are the discotheque's hours? It opens at 8 in the evening and closes at 3am early the next morning. Last call for drinks is at 2.45. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. All right, let's look at those 17 to 20. Okay, so we've got the map here. Here's the entrance. If I'm going to this uh, beach, then there's me, okay? Um, there's my left, there's my right, there's my water probably, um, or I can also call this my west, my east, 
my south, my north. Okay, that's what they're gonna use for directions like beside, above, next to. So I'm listening for those. I'm listening specifically now listen to, to the rest of the interview cafe. and answer questions 17 to okay. 20. Next, I'd like to take you down to the beach and show you some of the facilities and services we offer. As we approach the beach, you'll beach notice bars. the brilliant white sand that our resort is named after. The sand is incredibly fine and is lovely to walk on in your bare feet. Now you can see to your left is one of our beach bar facilities. There is also another beach bar about 100 meters to your right. These bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until 4.30 in the until afternoon. Four. On your right is a small cafe serving snack food items during the same opening hours as the beach bar. And straight ahead of us is our beach changing facility where you can change into your swimming costume, use the toilet or have a shower. Are there any water sports included in our holiday package? Good question. Yes, there are. You have unlimited access to our skimboards, surfboards, and beach sports equipment, such as beach volleyball and football. Additionally, you may sign up for windsurfing at our activity desk, located adjacent to the resort lobby. Finally, you may also register for our weekly water polo tournament, which is held each Friday afternoon at half past two. Does anyone else have any? That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, good. So now I have half a minute to check my answers. Okay, and that's what I need to do. Now you notice probably something very interesting, everybody. The answers started to come faster and faster and faster and faster, right? Did everybody notice that? Um, and that's typical in the IELTS exam. Okay, so it is common uh, for the answers to come faster and faster as you get nearer to the end of a listening part. Does anybody know why that is? Okay, why is that? Okay, so what do you think? Why does IELTS do that? There's a reason. It's not by accident. So sometimes people think, you know, these IELTS people are crazy. They just want your money. Um, they're there to make you upset and angry and feel feel terrible about English and life. Uh, it's not true. Okay, I know that a lot of you know why. It's not silly. They're, they obviously have a reason. Um, why is that? Prime says, well, to increase the difficulty. Yes, but how? So. Okay, and you only hear it once. So yes, but how? Okay, how does that increase the difficulty? Deadblader says, well, in real life, people speak fast. Yeah, in university, your professor, they're giving a lecture. You have to take notes. They're only saying it once. You have to uh, um, listen fast. Yeah. Prime says the faster pace makes it harder to grasp the information. Uh, you're kind of on the right track, Prime. It's not that. It's that um, at a faster pace, you have to understand, interpret, and be able uh, to use the information um, continuously without simply matching uh, words okay so um, for you know you hear that technique or like look for keywords and um, and just pay attention to that and, and then you'll answer uh, that works when it's slow and at kind of the beginning of the first few questions like questions one to five or one to six so keep this important tip in mind um, looking for keywords and matching words is only effective uh, for the first half of uh, part two and part three uh, questions um, because um, the second half of part two, three and all of part four 
are too fast to get stuck looking at words. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? So do you understand that? So when you're getting into the high band, like seven, eight, nine, it means that you can understand fluent conversation and remember the keywords and the answers and talk about it, right? Um, so you can't just be stuck looking at words, right? And that's the, that's the key is you have to understand content, all right? Okay, that's the idea behind how that exam is made. Um, so let's take a look at the answers and then we'll go through them. Um, and here, you know, for those of you who are like, oh, well, I'm going to go do another test. <laughs> Guess what? TOEFL is even more challenging. Keep this in mind. Um, it, so this is just food for thought. In TOEFL, which is the other big academic test, right? Um, you do not get to answer questions uh, while you listen. Instead, you take notes and answer after the audio. Okay, so in TOEFL, it's even more challenging because they say, hey, wait a second, you shouldn't even be answering while you're listening. You should answer after you listen to all of the information. So that's kind of, that's where people are like, really I have to take notes so a lot of people will say that the TOEFL listening is a lot more difficult because you can't answer while you listen okay make sense so IELTS is at least a little bit more friendly okay um, Carolina says for me that's better and for some people it is some people say hey you know what I'd rather just take notes and then answer after and you saw me do some of that as well okay all right, um, so let's uh, answer these questions. And for sure, for some questions, as you'll see very soon here, notes and listening to information is the better way, okay? So here we go, uh, number 11, approximately how long will the tour be according to the guide? So, you know, any questions? Yes, how long will this tour be? I have to meet my family. The woman says the tour will be Half an hour, see, very good. A lot of you got that, yeah. She doesn't say half an hour, she says 30 minutes, right? So listen for the paraphrasing. But 30 minutes is half an hour. Exactly, save day. Elizabeth, very nice, very good. Okay, now questions 12 to 15. Um, this is what's called a multi-multiple choice. So you have one question and you actually have to choose four answers uh, from eight. So four correct, four wrong. Instead of staring at these, I just took notes. So that was my strategy here is just simply taking notes, right? So I basically said, okay, you know what? Instead of looking at these and getting really confused, I'm just going to write down what this resort has to offer. And you have a note paper, you have it in your, um, in your computer-based exam as well. So I wrote down 10 acres, direct coastline, so beach access, safe for swimming, punchy jellyfish, but not deadly. Um, it's got a bar, it's got four buildings, A, B, C, D, <laughs> Cuban restaurants, seven of seven restaurants. So which ones match, right? And then I'm like, well, which ones match? Okay. Well, they said they have a night cafe, so that's good. Um, no deadly jellyfish, so that's wrong because they say it twice, right? There's two ways that you know that there's no deadly jellyfish. It says it's safe to swim. No person should ever say the beach is safe to swim if you have deadly jellyfish. It's safe swimming, except for the deadly jellyfish. They'll kill you. Um, that's silly, okay? A normal human in a normal society will never tell you that you should go swimming with deadly jellyfish okay um, so uh, obviously the jellyfish are not deadly uh, they're maybe a little bit stingy they maybe like a bee or like a wasp or something they can hurt you a little bit but they're not gonna kill you okay yeah go go swim over there it's safe oh by the way the shark might eat you there but you know but it's safe um, so no right IELTS makes sense okay all right, um, so no, no 
jelly, deadly jellyfish. A Cuban restaurant. So it said, okay, there's a Cuban restaurant. Did it say that there's a 24-hour Cuban restaurant? No. There's no 24-hour Cuban restaurant. Uh, four apartment buildings, A, B, C, D. Yes, that's in my notes. Okay, so here I'm just going from my notes. So, so far we've got A. We've got D. Okay. All right. <laughs> Alex says, yeah, my brother took TOEFL, but after he told me you should go with IELTS. <laughs> yeah, TOEFL can be a lot more difficult than the IELTS. They can put in extra sections too. Um, anyway, okay, and then uh, E, a number of restaurants. Yeah, there's seven. So there's definitely a number of restaurants. So E is good. To be exact, it's seven. That's what I wrote down. Um, a dozen acres of land? No, because it said 10 acres. So it's not a dozen acres. Uh, direct beach access, direct access to the coastline. That looks good. So G looks good. Several buffet restaurants. That's a tricky one, everybody. You're going to be like, what? Um, several buffet restaurants? No. Several is more than two. Okay. Um, I know this is a tough one in English, um, but let me explain this one to you. So this is a little learning moment here. Okay. Okay. One, a couple, several. All right. We generally don't say several for two. Okay. Um, so several or several can be like three, four, five, six, seven. A few would be like three to five. Okay. So one, a couple, we say a couple of. It's always a couple of two, okay? And then several is three plus, okay? All right? That's a tough one, I know. That's where, you know, band eight, band nine, right? A band eight, band nine level candidate, even a 7.5 will likely know that several is not accurate, all right? Why I said I had no idea. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Okay, um, let's uh, let's keep going here. Uh, this was fast. I agree. Number sixteen. What time is the last call at the discotheque again? I just stayed with notes for multiple choice. Answered on my own. It says dancing um, until three, and then last drink um, is uh, two forty-five, right? So the correct answer here was uh, B. Last call, this expression, this collocation, okay? It means last chance to purchase drinks. All right, now uh, the diagram. A lot of students have difficulty with diagrams. Learn to visualize, learn to draw, okay? So you saw me drawing here. I'm like, okay, I go in. Bar to the left, bar to the right. I've got my drinks. Hoo hoo, double fisted. Drinks in my left hand, drinks in my right hand. I am a happy camper until I have too many of those drinks. And instead of going into the ocean for my last breath of air on earth, I decide to live another day and pick up a cup of strong coffee to keep me going. And that is going to happen just past the beach bar on the left. Okay, party time. Uh, don't fall in the ocean, all right? Stay alive, live another day. Um, directions, right? Know your left, know your right, know your west, know your east, south, north, okay? Those are important, all right? Visualize, put yourself in the situation. You are in your palm tree swimming pants or your polka dot bikini and you're ready to hit those bars in that cafe where are they all right so the correct answer there i believe was a we didn't have to go too far if i'm not mistaken right i'd have to listen again but i think it was a okay definitely not c there was no beach bar in front of me like you don't want to fall and again logic everybody right so if you're going to have a resort you know how would you do it right if I were going to have a resort it would either be D 
or uh, let me show you that again. So if I had a resort, it would either be D or it would be um, A. That makes the most sense, right? So B and C doesn't make a lot of sense. You'd want a bar there, there, um, and maybe a cafe even closer to the beach, right? So you want people. You don't want people drinking right on the beach, and you want to spread out the bars so that people don't have to go too far. So people that are on the beach there can just go there. People that are on the beach there can just go there, right? So again, logic, everybody. Um, David says the cafe is on the right. Yeah, so in this case, the correct answer then is D. I didn't quite pay attention to that. I wasn't marking it, but yes. Uh, so cafe is on the right. So okay, I'm, I'm stumbling the wrong way. I need to stumble over that way and get my coffee on the right. Okay, so the correct answer is D. Okay, but only A and D make sense, All right? Okay. All right, uh, let's look at 18 to 20, everybody. This is filling in the paragraphs. These can be very quick. You have to be able to do these even after the audio is over. So the beach bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until what time? What time? Let's just get these answers. When is the, um, when are the cocktails done on the beach? Four. Okay, good. Yep. I believe it was four. They say it's done at four. You should not be drinking after four on the beach. Go have dinner. Rest, relax. Okay. Now, again, if you don't catch it, then you go back to the audio and you listen. All right. Four in the afternoon. Um, in addition to the small cafe on the beach, we also offer a changing uh, what? facility okay British English American English is usually a changing room but it's a changing facility uh, swimming costume is British English um, American English or Canadian English is swimming suit okay so if you're in the UK I'm not sure what Australians say maybe I've never I have a lot of Australian friends but I've never heard them say swimming costume or maybe I have I just didn't pay attention um, I don't know what the Aussies say I would imagine costume they're kind of more similar to the British but um, but anyway Canadians Americans it's swimming suit British say swimming costume Prime says swimming costume yeah for those of you who might be in Australia you uh, might know that Okay. All right. Um, where you can change in and out of your swimming costume or swimming uh, suit. Yeah. We also offer plenty of sports, uh, skimboarding, beach volleyball, football, windsurfing, and our once a week water polo tournament. Yeah, it was water polo. You had to kind of catch that one. Okay. Not polo. You have to have water polo. Okay, why is it important to write water polo instead of polo? Water polo and polo. Um, so water polo, definitely correct. Polo, definitely wrong. Why is that? <laughs> okay, somebody wrote just polo and that's why I'm showing you this. So David, it's not just polo. Why? David yeah that'd be funny to see people trying that in the uh, in the pool um, so water polo is a different sport okay a different sport uh, played by riding horses and hitting a ball would not work so well in a pool Okay, so although it'd be funny trying to play polo in a pool. Swim, you horse, splash that water, whack it with my stick. Why can I not get that ball to move? Uh oh, my horse is not liking me right now. Um, all right, uh, so water polo, right? Students, how did you do out of uh, 20? What'd you get? 20. 
What's your number? Um, so what you should be going for everybody for good band scores, band seven or higher, you should have at least 16 or more uh, from 20. Okay, so Anna, 14 is a little bit on the low side. Munchie, 13 is definitely on the low side. Okay, you don't have... I mean, if you've got 13, if you make another five, six mistakes in part three and part four together, you're at a band 6.5. So be careful. Prime, 19 is great. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, students, that listening again is from our website, okay? And you've got six full practice exams. We are adding four more. They have been in development for quite some time. It's just a lot on the plate, but uh, we're definitely going to get them done. Um, the website has tons of materials. And if you go to the lesson videos, you'll see that we have a full um, roster of videos for uh, listening with examples and so forth. So it's really good. Check it out. Um, and... Um, uh, the website again it's we use them in these live classes as you just saw today so to study at home and on the go I highly recommend joining the premium version of the course uh, you can do that by clicking the big red button that's a right above my head it's a one-time payment we're an IDP affiliate British Council partner and as I just said to somebody earlier in the class you can even register for your IELTS exam, your home-based version. If you see that button, that red button in the course, it's available in your country. Okay. And as Carolina is saying in the chat, you can also purchase the course through Shopify, right through uh, YouTube. Uh, tomorrow, everybody, as I mentioned, um, this is the sorry, this is the general IELTS website. And as I mentioned, tomorrow we're looking at speaking part two, speaking part three, as per usual. So make sure to come back for those speaking classes, and we'll use the website to interact with students. Uh, we'll speak to students um, via the website. Uh, AEHelp.com, GIELTSHelp.com. Um, map listening prime is kind of like that beach resort one just maybe with some more details so keep that in mind yeah absolutely okay all right everybody thank you so much for being with me I hope that your weekend continues to be awesome I am here tomorrow with more classes I hope to see you until then take care of yourselves spread love and happiness around you be patient be understanding with your fellow humans much love to all of you wherever you are in the world right now. I'm Adrian. I'm here in Victoria, Canada. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Carolina, for moderating. Thank you, subscribers. Thank you, everyone. Bye.